welcome to this episode of HC Talk. I'm your host, Lance Gormley. And I am your co-host, Sissy C. HC Talk is an HCD podcast. This is the part of the program where we talk about state and national issues from a small town, Main Street, American perspective. Oh, well, what do you have for us this week, Sissy? All right. So the state of Kansas, uh, they have passed in the legislature a bill to eliminate the concealed carry fees. And I believe that's going to the governor for her signature. Hmm. Yeah, I was seeing a little bit of hubbub about that. That's actually pretty good. I'm in favor of that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, I don't, uh, you know, even though you're talking about what might seem to some as though a small amount of money is not always a small amount of money to others. And if we really do believe and buy in as a state to the all idea that we have constitutional carry mm -hmm. and that our citizens should be able to continue to remain intact mm -hmm. wherever they go if possible right and by eliminating that fee that gives people the ability who are state residents to say you know can state residents to say well i want to go to colorado or i want to go to another state and i don't want to be disarmed mm -hmm. right so to be in compliant and be legal and all that then i need to have a concealed carry permit that's right and removing that fee opens it up for more people i mean there's no reason not to Right, actually, right. and uh, and I agree with you absolutely. That's what I meant to say. Sorry, actually, <laughs> uh, all same. You know, semantics. Yeah, right well, now. you're going to get ate Just up read by my the mind, grammar right? police this week. Read my sissy. mind. Okay, so along those lines, concealed carry, right? So there's like major training that's involved with that, right? In order to obtain that license, there's some training, some right? Car training, right? So I saw a blip on the Facebook that I forgot to mention last week that I wanted to share this week with our listeners. Hmm. So on April 22nd in Hutchinson, there's going to be a class put on by Safeguard Investigations and Consultants following and modeled on the concealed carry guidelines for the state of Kansas. Okay. And uh, it's $50 per person. And you're encouraged, if you want to take advantage of that class, to register in advance by texting Mike. And his phone number is 620 875 one six five zero and truth be told i am an active firearm um carrier okay i i'm a proponent for second amendment rights i'm a fan of constitutional carry and i tell you you can't ever go uh you can never go wrong with having a little bit more knowledge That's a little right. bit more training putting you you know so right. if you get a chance you know maybe reach out to mike and See Register. if maybe that's something you want to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the location of the class will only be provided to the people that register mm. to keep that completely safe and secure. And uh, that will be a very good class to go through, I think. I would agree. Anonymity. That's interesting. I like that. I don't know if they all do that, but that's, that's kind of neat. We'll go and with that. Speaking of guns, right? So we're along those lines, guns, ammo, things like that. Fire, Second fire Amendment, you know. Second Amendment, Constitutional right. rights. So in my graduate degree, I did a white paper on uh, the abolition of the death penalty in Kansas. Okay. So that's that's a deep rabbit hole to go down if anybody wants to check that out, especially the, uh, the element of the lethal injection, which is our statutory method of execution, if we hmm. should use that. Right. Are you going? Are we? We're right. not talking about the death penalty today. No. You cannot come prepared to talk about the death penalty when we don't agree on something, and then expect me to right. not have. Right. Well, you know. <laughs> so they don't do that to me today, sissy. That's not fair. Right. Well, you know, I got, I got to get it in there, you know, every now and then. But no, I absolutely am a proponent to do away with lethal injection at the most urgency point in in our history, right? Because it is just terrible. But anyway. So firing squads, hmm. states are bringing firing squads back, right? Yeah, because they kind of had a hiccup there and and need to maybe get creative with ways in the past that uh, were legally allowable right. to um, administer that consequence. Right. So I, I found it interesting that um, it, some of the legislation in some of the surrounding states to Kansas that have passed this uh, added firing squads as a statutory method of execution uh, allows the um, uh, person on death row to choose their method of execution between lethal injection 
or firing squad. Mm. And, you know, again, it's a deep rabbit hole, you know, the whole death penalty debate. But I, I really think that firing squads would get the job done very quickly. <laughs> Are we really going this and, dark? Uh, well, I mean, so, what, you I know, mean Come on, sissy, we can, today. You know, guns are bad, right, according well, to, to people oh, uh, that see. want gun control. Okay, and, okay. You know, if, uh, if they can be used in a, a humane way to execute mm. someone who has been deemed executable uh, and leave the lethal injection out of the picture, I am all for it. What do you say, uh, our listeners, let us know what you're thinking <sighs> about it. You know, I was not expecting you to take that take, actually. You kind of threw me for a loop there. At first, I was thinking you were going one way, and then you just went another, and now I'm, like, pleased and almost agree with you, but yet not at all. <laughs> I don't know. Why did you do this to me today? Now you're well, going to give me something to think about all week, and I have to, like, mm-hmm. unmess this mess in my messy head. Right, right. I mean, come on. Right. Do we just do away with it all together, or do we mm. do it a different way? I, I just want to go back to, I know this, I know that right now we're speaking of gun control, okay? And we've talked about schools, mm-hmm. and I think it's fitting to maybe talk about something that's been in the news a lot lately. Yep, I and know And that you're is going. two things, actually. Um, gender policies is one, uh, and then also gun control mm-hmm. is another and I'm just going to say it, I mean, in the onset, I'm so sick and tired of, of hearing that if we ban a gun or we limit a magazine capacity or, you know, these plethora of things that we know don't work, right. that then somehow or another, they're going to miraculously work. It's, it's, it's unbelievable still, still to me, okay, that in so many of our school systems, we still have security problems, Mm. massive security problems. Mm. In many cases, they're like shining beacons Mm. on a hill Mm. for somebody that wants to do something bad. And we know with this most recent shooter that they drove around looking for the, the The one without security. Yeah, You got to be messed up, man. Okay. So let's ban, let's ban the gun. Right. Yeah. Let's ban the gun. I mean, it's unbelievable to think that we're still having the same conversation that we're still, um, I mean, let's just have better security at our schools. And, and that goes back to funding. You know, my MPA here, that mm-hmm. goes back to funding. Absolutely. Right. So why is it that it's not a priority right. for our legislatures across the United States to ensure that our children are safe when they go to school? I'm sure. The governor has security. Right. Sure. Sure. People with abilities can have, but we're not going to protect our children. Right. You know, who needs who needs an armed security officer at a school? I mean, are we serious at this point in time? Right. Yeah. And then and then to and then to and and I'm going to say it. Oh, this. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I have and I don't know how to say it the right way, but I'm going to say it. And if I could get canceled, I'm probably going to get canceled. I'm sure of it. But I have never seen a display that makes the shooter out to be the victim the victim oh man and if i'm not the only one that's catching that yeah. you got me messed up because Mm-mm. because you know I, it was almost like i'm am i hearing this like you i'm asking it. myself am yeah. i listening hearing this and, and and then i go okay well let's go and pick some other sources to look at right because mm-hmm. i'm not going to be just listening to a bias source so we go to these other sources to look for it and realize that oh it just gets worse it does yeah it did so now all of a sudden this person's a victim. Right. Right. It's straight from the White House's mouth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, six people, innocent people, who are just going about their day, you know, added to the list of innocent victims, you know, because somebody decided to uh, take revenge. And, uh, you know, she has a manifesto. Oh, excuse me. I said she. I, I really don't know, to be honest with you, if it's she, he, I really don't know. And, and, and forgive me. But it's not she or that, he, um, it's a they. Well, and it's because of you your know, type for, of thinking that caused that person I, to go in there know, and do know, all that. You know that, right? You know, my thing is, is, uh, <clears throat> yeah. So for our White House to have that kind of messaging, <clears throat> that is, um, that is tragic in well, itself. I mean, it's even worse. I mean, with somebody that's suffering like that, that they would actually have the ability to get hold of a gun. 
I mean, we should like make more requirements, right? For people to be able to own, possess, or have a firearm. We should do everything we can to make sure that we make it as difficult as humanly possible to protect yourself mm. while we watch our federal government not protect us. But if that school had had the ability to have someone carrying a teacher or the administrator or even a security officer, chances are that might not have happened. Mm. See, so I think that's the issue. Well, I think it doesn't matter who decides <clears throat> to pick up a gun and go shoot up a school and kill innocent people. I think that every place should have at least someone posted or allow their teacher to carry or their administrators to carry. I mean, they do the drills. It's not new. But having a lack of the ability to defend the kids and the other people innocently going about their day inside those buildings, that is absolutely has to change. Yeah. And I think a lot of it goes back to funding. You know, um, it really does go back to funding. Let's say USD 373 decided that on the cusp of this we were just going to decide that we need to to uh, increase our security mm. that instead of having some places where there may or may not be i mean i wouldn't make the gamble right so i wouldn't come here and try to question it because i mm -hmm. guarantee you newton's not the place to try to accomplish that mm, right sure. so beware mm -hmm. uh, but also the fact that our school board is going to have to fund that our taxpayers are going to have to fund that mm -hmm. our so i guess i'm just starting to wonder at this point at this point why are we not looking at it from the perspective of i'm willing to spend a few extra tax dollars to be able to ensure that the youth in my community when they go to school to that they're protected right you know i'm with you but even then i mean you think Let's about start a gofundme daycare centers mm -hmm. when's that you know when are people going to wake up and realize that the only thing with a, a bad guy with a gun is a good person with a gun right well they're they're in uh gun free zones right they're not safe zones. They're targets. And, you know, for the people that are against putting armed guards or, or arming teachers, these are the same people that say, uh, well, you know, it's, it's going to give the kids a bad idea. They probably wouldn't be apt to look at guns and know what guns are and potentially do something bad with a gun if somebody wasn't modeling that behavior. Well, I would much rather them not have to go to a funeral or have to bury that child, you know, it's okay yeah. for our kids to see that because that is a positive message. We want them to respect law enforcement officers, do we not? Well, let's use the sexual education argument. Okay. Right? We teach our kids health class, mm. which when I was a kid was known as sexual health class or whatever, right? right? Like sex ed. Sex ed, mm -hmm. okay? So... The common argument for people that did not want that taught in the school system was that they didn't want for their kid to be exposed to that. And there was an out, right? Like mm -hmm. you don't have to have your kid involved in that. They can be out if you don't want your kid to be involved. Right. You feel strongly about that. But otherwise, we're going to have this education because we realize that even though, let's say, oh, I could make the two sin. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. let's go there. Even though there's this gun available that we can all play with. It does have drastic consequences. Right. So you need to do this and this and this to make sure that gun mm -hmm. doesn't create a problem that's, you know, causing you health problems right. or having you with an unwanted, unexpected pregnancy at uh, underage mm -hmm. or whatever. Right. So it's the same thing. We can teach gun safety. I mean, from a male perspective in school, mm -hmm. but yet we can't teach gun safety. Right. Because right? because right. of course. These kids don't see any of this stuff anywhere. Right. They're not playing video games where they butcher people with uh, machine mm -hmm. guns, right? Mm -hmm. None of this is taking place. No, no, not not in this day and age. Yeah, no. so, so what happened Absolutely to the fact not. of teaching this, having this education available, and if you are somebody that is not for it, just ask you, you just don't have your kid participate. Mm -hmm. And yeah. they can stand there and crawl under a desk and, um, you know, be somebody that doesn't even have the ability to operate a tool that mm. can be used to help protect them and, or others. I look at it right. entirely different. <clears throat> I've never had any problems with them. Right. Well, it's all about the consciousness of it. Yeah. What is it? Well, you treat it with respect because it's a deadly weapon, right? But it is a tool that can be used. So speaking of schools and speaking of law enforcement, speaking of children's safety. So I saw a story uh, from KWCH from an article on March 21st 
uh, regarding Scott City, Kansas, Mm -hmm. little Scott City, Kansas. And it was about uh, a man, a grown man that was posing as a young girl on Snapchat that was trying to get um, children to send uh, nude photos of themselves to this person. And uh, one child, uh, they were successful in obtaining nude photos of one child in which he blackmailed and threatened violence against this child um, unless he sent uh, him $1,000. I'm sorry, the child, I don't know if it was a male or female child, so I misspoke there. But the man demanded $1,000 via Venmo, which I believe is a um, PayPal like a, app like type a thing. cash <laughs> app or something, right? Uh, and, and obviously someone figured out what's going on, maybe a parent or, or a teacher or something and called law enforcement and they immediately, uh, began an investigation and, um, ultimately warned parents to not allow their small children or any children to use social media. Okay. So this was somebody from the local community that was doing this? I do not know that. I don't, I know the child was a local uh, child to the Scott City area. Mm-hmm. So they might have just been a victim of mm-hmm. some entirely random deal, like somebody Could from be. another country mm-hmm. even, right? Could I mean, be. we're having yeah. these debates on about TikTok and social right. media platforms right. and right. all this. And it just is uh, frustrating me even more. Right. Because I don't know who didn't like wake up one day and realize that like half the people on Facebook don't even go by their real name. Mm-hmm. You know, I am Lance Gormley. Mm -hmm. My name is out there. I've been verified. I am the person who I say I am on social media. Do you know how many people aren't? Right. You know how many names you see on a regular basis of people that are not even the names of who they try to say they are? And then this is what I always think. If you can't even have your real name on Facebook, theoretically, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's reasons in which maybe you wouldn't. Mm -hmm. But let's just say that, um, you know, if I wanted to endeavor into something, not even being able to be forthright with my name kind of leads into me not being very credible in mm-hmm. what I'm saying, mm-hmm. you know, right? like I can go say something under the guise of being somebody else. And it's amazing how brash or out irrational that some people get when that happens mm-hmm. right. uh, because there's what they think there's no consequence, but there is, I mean, unless you're from another country somewhere. Right. And anonymity, typically in this day and age, especially on social media interactions and things like that, I think anonymity is used as a nefarious tool to to um, to be a bad actor. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But anonymity can be good, as in the case of Sissy C. Yeah, which we'll find out soon Which will will, will give the clue to the big reveal. But you're not actually being dishonest with who you are, Sissy C, because you've always been Sissy C to me. Right, right. I mean, for real, that's your name to me. Right, right. Well, you know, it's my passion. (sighs) I'm just joking. Uh, so, So moving on from the schools because we're not quite to that part of the program yet. Yeah. Uh, moving on t- from the schools, law enforcement, guns, things like that. I also read a very interesting um, alternative energy project. Oh, I think I right? saw the same thing. And, and I won't spend too much time on this, but it's interesting for our area. We've kind of got a model situation happening in northwest Sedgwick County near Colwich. Um, there is a company out of the Chicago area called Invenergy who is trying to get a solar panel farm set up there. Uh, And there was uh, public meetings held on March 29th and March 30th for citizens to come and give their uh, opinions and uh, have some of their questions answered. I bet the Kukamoo showed up for that one. Well, you know, we had talked about uh, wind and things like that. And Mm -hmm. and we've, we've talked about the sun falling apart or a piece of the sun falling off and coronal holes and... We recently started seeing the northern lights uh, more south than normal. Which we might actually be able to see tonight into the next few days. Right. So, you know, it's it's apropos Mm -hmm. to discuss alternative um, energy projects. And like I said, it could be a model situation where uh, Harvey County... And some and other places can can take a peek at that process and see if it, solar panel farms might actually be better than wind turbine farms. Well, I just want to stop you right there. We need to put out we need to put out a special announcement to all the kookamoos. Calling all kookamoos. Calling all kookamoos. There is a meeting 
that has been held, and they are getting ready to make decisions. There is public comment. Check it out. Hours. You could do hours of wasted time on public comment. <laughs> Not wasted. Show up in force. Not wasted. People care. Right. I'm sure solar panels are bad. I'm sure somehow or another they're bad. Well, le- Anything they don't but make oil. noise, I don't think, but I don't know how it's going to well, work out. What's going to happen when they the- reflect the sun? Can you imagine the birds that are going to be blinded flying through the air because of the sun that's reflecting off of the solar yeah, panels? I don't, I don't know. I, my thought hot went spots. to hot spots. They're going to do hot spots. My thought went to the uh, the the as close as the aviation hub of of ICT is. You're going to blind pilots. Um, They're going to crash you know, planes. I don't know. I, I don't want to go quite down that rabbit hole, but you know, hey, uh, you know, I don't know how big this thing is supposed to be. So unless uh, they can have planes that fire on solar panels, I don't think we should be having this conversation. I don't think we should make planes that have solar panels and that's how they fly because you know Kansas, the weather changes every five minutes. Just wait. Can you imagine if a plane is flying? Batteries. Oh, batteries. Batteries. Oh. Keep it going. Everybody uh, pay extra for your parachute, right? Absolutely not. Oh. Absolutely not. Okay. Those things will work. So we're talking about solar solar panels. panels. (laughs) Gotta love solar panels. So to the kook moose, make sure and, and if there is a solar panel debate, you go and you, you take with you everything you got off the internet and you tell them how it is. Because the internet is the oracle of all That's why they get elected to okay. listen to you. All right. Kukamoo. So, so, okay. So very last bit of state national type stuff, mm. I believe. Wait, wait, wait. No, not the last bit of oh, national. Oh, God. You I, have one last, <laughs> I have one last tidbit. Oh, it's only half a page. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. yeah, you already <laughs> did front and back. I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, you know Thank me. You, I got sissy. a background everything. This okay. program would not happen without Sissy. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, prayer in schools. Oh, now, yes. We have talked about this. Thank you. We have talked about this a couple of times on a previous episode. Because we're dealing with that at a low, fairly local level. Right. But this is a, it's not just necessarily a local. This is a state national issue. Right. Well, you know, there is a statute in the state of Kansas on the books and has been for many, many years. Not sure how long. But the uh, quote from the statute regarding parent schools is actually, quote, one minute period of silence per day. End quote. Now, the per day is in reference to a school day, Mm -hmm. right? Uh, So I found that interesting because I'm always about, you know, separation of church and state. And, you know, that's a misnomer because it was actually Thomas Jefferson who just said it in a letter and it took off like wildfire. So there's that big debate, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you know, I'm all for the moment of silence. I think that kind of is inclusive for everyone, including people who just don't pray. Okay, so right? question. So. <clears throat> because we are having this discussion at a local level, because the state of Kansas, or let's say to whoever listener from out of this area is mm-hmm. listening, because your state, and it's not always consistently exactly the same, but right. on the on the right track here, we're on the right track, that if the state says that there's a moment of silence that's that's required or recommend it's required here in the state I be- of Kansas. I believe it's a requirement. So then why are we having a discussion about prayer in schools? Haven't they already figured that one out? Well, but they don't have the moment of silence. Huh? Yeah. Well, and then only that, I just find it's interesting as we travel down this, because I keep having people reach out to me. And once again, this is fairly local for us, but mm-hmm. this is something that resonates with people because this is local government times a, a thousand. Right. Mm-hmm. right. Um, each school board deals with this. Each school board could potentially deal with that, coupled with your state laws and what your legislature says about it. And okay, so the whole the whole wham bam thing. Okay, why is it that I keep getting people calling me, texting me, and messaging me, saying that there are people who are against this taking place at mm. a level here locally? Mm. And then not only that, mm. but yet it's not the people you would think it is. Mm. Well, you know, I, I think the issue is, is is people want to have the liberty to be excluded. And what I mean by that is, you know, so the message is always inclusive, right? Inclusivity. Well, I, I think that uh, as individuals, you know, you may not believe the way I believe, you know, and we're acquainted, right? Yeah. We kind of know each other, right? So, but... 
when you do it in a in a gathered, you know, you can't impress upon one group of people or, or the group of people who are, you know, kids are basically captive, right, mm-hmm. in the classroom for this event. And I want to say captive, but you get my point, right? They don't have a choice what goes on. They just are told what goes on. So um, the the separation then becomes does the state or does the school board or whatever entity it is have the right or authority to impress a certain faith or a certain um, belief system on whoever's there? Well, of course not, right? They're there, kids are there to learn, and and some may believe that the having a prayer and a pledge of allegiance at the beginning of the day is the only way for them to learn whatever, right? Good qualities, morality, whatever. Uh, But if somebody doesn't believe that, say the teacher of the classroom, and they opt out, I think the messaging is lost because then you're excluding the kids in the class that may become aware of that because the teacher does not believe it's inclusive. And I know that seems like a roundy round uh, okie doke that I just well, did. But I mean, it's critical thinking because it's trying to look at the unintended consequences of a decision that right. you made. You know, right. and and I think that's that's what we want anybody, but especially with leaders. Mm-hmm. I just know that. Well, why? I guess I got a question, Sissy. Why does it seem that if it's at a national level, even like a state state level? And sometimes probably in people's local, local levels, there's this take on trust. Okay. And I call it a take on trust, which is, man, I've talked to a lot of people through my life and doing what I do that are just disenfranchised because they rely on someone um, when it comes to getting them elected. Most people are nearsighted, so they vote for people based on issue, like Mm. one or two issues. I'm going to go, and here's an issue you're mad about, Mm. and I'm going to go fix this issue for you, whatever that is. And then at a national level, it's, well, all Republicans are bad if you're a Democrat. And at a Democrat level, it's all, you know, it's Mm -hmm. just vice versa. We just beat each other over the head with the same stick over and over and over again. But the only people that get screwed are you and me. Right. Right. Why? Right. Well, I don't know. What Uh, is that? I think you have to... um, you know, carpe diem, right? Seize the day. And, and in a political campaign, we have to pay attention. We have to listen and we have to decide, will this person speak for me the way I want them to speak for me? But people are asleep, sissy. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about this in Kansas, we're getting ready to come up on some elections, Mm. school board elections, city elections. Mm -hmm. Nobody goes and votes. You have a forum, 50 people show up, Mm -hmm. maybe if you're lucky, 100. If people are pissed Mm -hmm. about something, then Mm -hmm. maybe 200, okay? And and granted, granted, Mm -hmm. I'm sure this is not the same everywhere, right? Because we're dealing with populations. But but I know this in my education, right? My Mm -hmm. political science education teaches me statistically that those numbers are pretty much synonymous across the board. Right. That if you're in a, it's percentage-based. Right. Yeah, there might be more people that show up to a forum in Chicago, right? Mm -hmm. But still, the percentage of people that are going to get involved in a, um, in Kansas anyway, a nonpartisan election of some kind, Mm -hmm. local elections, well, nobody's interested in that. Mm -hmm. Right, because I think a lot of people have either failed to understand or have never been taught properly uh, civic education that local government is where everything is birthed or you know allowed to die right yeah so if in a lot so therefore a lot of people are only focused on presidential elections or congressional elections or so on and so forth i mean it really is important but on on this issue of prayer in schools it is not something that's being debated other than your your dinner table conversation i just find it fascinating there's a lot of information out there for people um and you know our commission voted to to do that, I believe, to have an invocation. Um, so, you know, there's that. I don't know if the city will ever um, will do uh, have any kind of discussion about that. Well, it's in process. But right. as, we, as we mentioned before, um, not to get too local here, mm-hmm. but yes, our, our mm-hmm. local elected officials right. are starting to do an about face. Mm-hmm. And I'd say the one thing that's coming of this COVID-19 
pandemic fallout is what I'll call it. I mean, <laughs> for lack of a better way of saying it, mm-hmm. uh, the repercussions that we're seeing right now um, are primarily um, done. People are just elected officials are now under the gun. People are seeing that there's a problem. They're wanting the problem solved. They're wanting the issue solved because it's, they're very uncomfortable and that's when people get motivated. Right. If I'm going along my daily life and I'm collecting my paycheck and my kids are healthy and my house mm-hmm. is good and my everyday, you know, for 65 to 70% of the American population is just fine and dandy, that when you start getting into that 70% and all of those people are getting affected across the board, now that's when things start to change at a national level. The problem is, is nobody goes and votes. Right, but I really do go back to the element of education. Right. Understanding processes. Why did that outcome occur? Let's reverse back and let's see the step by step process to get us there. Right. Because that may be where we have a question as well. Why was that decided or who voted for that? Right. So um, just keeping your ear to the ground, checking out stuff, uh, a really good source that I rely on uh, is a kill read amar and that's a k h i l read r e e d amar a r or a m a r he is a constitutional scholar he has a youtube channel and he does an apple podcast called america's constitution he has written many books and he really has a good solid uh take on constitutional rights and how those apply to everyday life of every citizen in this country including immigrants who become naturalized. And I I really cannot stress enough to to, um, not just take my word for it, but but go check it out. Go check him out. Check out some other folks. I mean, you know, we have a whole bunch of people we could think of to to name drop. But, you know, if we don't understand the processes and we're not educated of how those step-by-step processes occur, what are we doing when we vote? We're just going and putting our name down. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. Let's just vote for that. Well, you might be voting to not have trash service and not realize it. Right. People are lazy. Right. So that brings me to um, the banning til- uh, ban TikTok bill. Hmm. And that's being uh, uh, debated and in I, the uh, I want to rest on Congress. that. I want to rest on that for a minute. But before we rest on that, um, and I know this is kind of, I don't, this is going sideways a little bit, but speaking of, of the you know, fallout or whatever. I know here in Kansas, we have virtually no unemployment, right? So anybody that's looking for a job <laughs> right, in a state that might have worse unemployment, I don't know if we're across that all the way across the board. I don't know, but I know in Kansas, you know, I've heard a lot of people say, man, you can't find nobody. Nobody wants to work. Mm. And I just want to set it clear here as I've been endeavoring to do some of this and doing some sponsorships for some local companies about employment and them looking for some people is that, well, you companies are starting to have to think outside the box about how they communicate and advertise to Mm -hmm. that they have jobs and whatnot. And, um, it's becoming a worker's market, Mm. you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so now is a really good time to be able to secure, especially employment here in Kansas. If you're from out of the state or if you're in the state, make sure that you're where you want to be because now's a good time to even position. Um, so here in Kansas, employment is good. Yeah. So as far yeah. as that goes, but yeah, what you were saying, uh, why is it always seem that the, the federal government is doing the sleight of hand on us American people? Well, you know, and on its face, TikTok, uh, you know, it's been demonized to, uh, as the Chinese spying, right? Yeah. It's the right. enemy because so, they do a better job mm-hmm. at, at utilizing social media platforms with AI technology than we do. You know, my, yeah. Facebook, my, you, know, you know, my whole, my whole, um, uh, I just was completely confused and actually taken aback when I read about this banning TikTok because of the Chinese, right? We, you know, our president let a Chinese spy balloon go across our United States for days. And we're worried about something that's a social media platform that's been in people's hands for uh, what? Three, four, five, seven years. And this started, this started now with um, not allowing government officials Mm-hmm. in possession of a cellular device provided right. for their 
position to have the app downloaded. Now right, all of a right. sudden we're wanting to ban you from having it. Right, and I right. and, 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 and I want to say this. I've been watching this TikTok demonization and I'm not a fan of TikTok. Right. I'm not really a fan of much social media in general. I think it's very impersonal and that it's just allowed people to be dumber and that it's allowed people to wind up not uh, be, being very brash to people just doesn't bring mm. out the good right, in anybody, right? right? Okay, right. now, but granted, it's a tool, so mm -hmm. it's a public space, right? We're gonna, you know, operate in right. public space. But the fact that Harvey or the fact that TikTok is getting the bad rap when all of these other applications do the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. they all I don't do know it. if people know this, but when you download Facebook as an application or Instagram, mm -hmm. which is an extension of that, or any of these. Mm -hmm. You're, you're signing up to give these people access or these companies to give access to your camera, to your pictures, to your microphone. Right. So theoretically, here's the conspiracy here. Right. Everything you say, every time you use any application at all on your phone, anytime you use your phone, it's being recorded. Right. Wake up, people. Right. And then that's being data mined through an AI algorithm system that then, so, so, so TikTok's the bad one, right? right no. We got to ban TikTok no. instead of like, what, 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 but we're not banning TikTok, are we? We're banning TikTok, but what's really going on, sissy? <laughs> well, honestly, you know, of course, conspiracy theorist wonder twins activate. Doo -doo -doo. Right. Okay. So it, to me, it's a 55 page bill and on page 11 some folks that i follow on the on the twitter were were dissecting that and on page 11 it actually starts talking about that uh the government will be and i'm talking about the united states federal government i i cannot speak for any state governments uh in this uh, would have the ability to shut down anyone or any entity that it deems is a threat so, uh, like I said, it's good on its face mm. uh, that if it is a Chinese uh, data mining uh, tool, uh, that they, they would be going for public safety, right? Are but, we a threat, sissy? But should the government have the authority to do that? Because, you know, we've, we've been watching the Twitter files and talking about the, uh, the censorship uh, mess and trying to say that the government is, uh, is beyond its scope of authority and free speech and yada, yada, yada. But is it a Patriot Act 2.0? Well, it it's kind of looking is it like a Trojan that, right? Horse? Isn't that how it always right? works with them? We've got to demonize, demonize, demonize something or have some kind of an event of some kind, and people go, oh, please, government, protect me. Oh, please, Mr. Government, save me. Oh, please, <laughs> Mr. Government, rescue me from my own right. situation. And that's your right. job. And, right. and you know, when we get into that type and mode of thinking, which seems to be what's happening. In fact, yeah, we, 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 we got to come back to this another day because I'll tell you what. Um, and people can look at this and research this. And I learned this through my education because I didn't believe it. So I want to deep dive on it. It is the truth. As we move farther into future with uh, these types of events similar to COVID or similar to, to TikTok, you know, like you can't just not use the application, right? Right. Delete. Um, we have to have a government ban it for us, right. you know, right. type of thing. Right. Cause we're not capable of, you know. Well, that, and what about so. the disenfranchisement that the, the people that are Americans that work for TikTok, what about them? Well, you know, don't get put on the black. No. I mean, they're doing exactly to TikTok what they want to do to everybody else. And that's why I asked right. you, like, are we a threat? Is it, when, when, when will I be deemed a threat and then eliminated? Uh, well. And when we live in this social media platform world and you start eliminating people off of that, then basically you're just erasing them in society. Right, right. I mean, we memorialize people on Facebook after they're dead. That's an option. Oh, well. To keep yourself alive after you're gone. Oh. Mm -hmm. I guess to remind people on a yearly basis that you died. Well, speaking of the Facebook, right? So we're talking about, you, you mentioned that uh, they have access, you, mm -hmm. you agree to have let them have access to this tracking device that you're holding in your hand or carrying in your back pocket, right? So, um, yeah, I was having a conversation with someone the other day, and we were talking about um, earwax mm. problems, right? Uh, I don't have mm -hmm. earwax problems, but it just kind of came up and it was kind of like one of those weird random conversations that we have with people. 
you know, five minute conversation if it even took that long. And all of a sudden, Facebook was sending me every single ad on how to combat earwax problems. Yeah, test it, folks. And it's like, okay, Facebook, I didn't even have you engaged, right? My phone was, you know, across the room. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And it's scary. Well, and I've tested this. I've tested it on multiple occasions personally. Uh, You can have your phone sitting in the room, have a conversation, and within 24 hours to 36 hours, you are getting things put in front of you that are specific to the conversation that you're having. And we wonder how people get down this rabbit hole. I mean, think about these personal conversations that you might be having with people about personal Mm -hmm. relationships that you have with somebody, maybe intimate relationships that you have with somebody. And next thing you know, because you might be trying to bounce some of your insecurities off a friend, the next thing that's happening is, is you're getting bombarded with they're all cheaters. Right. I mean, I don't know. You know, right. just, I mean, it's, it's well, like a relationship runner. I mean, it's ridiculous. Or, or like, or uh, people search something. I mean, you can tell right. a lot about what people are into by just seeing their, their feed. Their Google history. Well, not even a Google history, just what comes up on their right. screen. You know, what, what comes up in their scroll. If, if something consists, I mean, if somebody likes baseball and they're constantly watching on baseball and people don't realize mm-hmm. this is really, really deep, like down to a three second whether you look at something, when you visualize something on your Facebook or on your Instagram or on your TikTok for three seconds, that's considered an impression. Mm-hmm. And from that, then that goes into an AI database that then puts more of that in front of you. Right. The more that you look at that, the more it puts in front of you. So it's almost designed to spiral you into this silo. And then we wonder why people are in silos everywhere we go. Mm-hmm, and right. it's because they're just victims of the, the uh, I don't know, call AI. I mean, Elon Musk, beware of AI. If people mm-hmm. really knew what uh, what's on the horizon, they would mm-hmm. just... Right, so this... Uh, unbelievable. Ban TikTok bill, right? We're talking about, is it, a, is it a Patriot Act 2.0 or Trojan horse or whatever? So just that in general, right? So we're having a conversation we let our hair down, we say some opinionated remarks, right? And all of a sudden, bam, 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 the FBI is at your door (laughs) because you said something. I mean, you know, hey, look what they did with COVID, right? Yeah. So, you know, there's that. We'll table that for another uh, discussion. But, okay, so first clue to who is Sissy C Mm. leading up to the big reveal. I served as a law enforcement officer for six years. I'm not gonna say where. Uh, I Should I say, say where? No, cause that probably just, that yeah, we're, you know, small town. Right, so we'll not. leave it there. Yeah, so, okay. so start thinking about who Sissy is cause we need to know. It seems it's pretty important to people. I've even had people tell me that they will not listen to my program unless I tell them who you are. Well, they'll just have to be a little bit more patient. And I said, it's Sissy C. Right. Like, I don't know what you mean. Cause <laughs> like we talked right. about, you've always been Sissy C to me. Right. So right. what do you mean? Right. Like that's Sissy C. Right. So in time good things come to those who wait yeah and you know it seems as though we might have to spend a little more time in the future doing this because there's so much to cover so often that we really do have a lot of people reaching out and we appreciate you mm-hmm. we appreciate you reaching out i i i see this all right i'm on the back end of this i see that those of you that are watching i see those of you that are stay you know listening to the whole entire thing so all of this stuff lets me know and lets us know that you're listening and we appreciate it. You don't need to comment. You don't need to share unless of course, you know, there's an option at some point in time or another to do that and win a little something like we mentioned in the first program. That's right. That so, oil change from Midway Motors. Yes, it is. Engage with our, with our uh, posts, uh, yeah. like, comment, share. If you're listening to Wichita, I'm You'll, sure Midway Motors will change right. your uh, change your oil if you get pulled out of a hat. So, that's right. as Sissy was saying before we leave out of here, the way you get entered to win, now granted, we're in Harvey County. So, if you're from California, it might be difficult for you to get your car here mm-hmm. so you can do an oil change. But right. if you like, share, comment, anything on, on our uh, most recent 
part, uh, part one episode of Harvey County Talk, then you're entered for a chance to win a free oil change. That's right. Which will be announced Friday night of the car show. I believe that's May 5th, right? right. Well, thanks for listening to this week's episode of HC Talk. HC Talk is an HCD podcast. Make sure and reach out to either Sissy or me. And let us know what you're thinking. Enjoy your week, everybody. Bye.